Look, before I say any more, let me make the point that the new Prime Minister Albanese did not create the energy crisis, but he is expected to solve it. While it's not his fault, it is his problem. The blame game won't work. For the first time in its history, last week, a bureaucracy, not the free market, was running energy policy. It's energy by communism. The Australian energy market operator. I'll come to the hypocrisy in a minute, but hypocrisy was in full flight last week. I've said for years now that this push to net zero is a national economic suicide note, self-sabotage. Now we have the spectacle of almost the entire political class, both sides, embracing net zero. And of course, on the other side of the argument, big business, millionaires, billionaires, eyeing off the hundreds of billions of dollars of your money that continue to be channeled towards renewable energy. Just imagine how bad it will get when we mindlessly abandon coal and gas, but won't embrace nuclear power. As the widely respected long-time economic commentator Terry McCran said last year, and I quote, it's hard to avoid the comparison with the 1930s that what almost the entirety of the world has embarked on is the energy equivalent of that decade's appeasement. Indeed, worse than appeasement, across the developed world, it's unilateral energy disarmament in the face of the 2020s version of Hitler's Germany, President Xi's China. Back then, he said, the political caste turned a blind eye to Germany's rearming. Now the far, far more numerous political class turns a blind eye to China's energy rearming. Unquote, spot on. China has the world's biggest fossil fuel armory, emitting close to 30% of all global carbon dioxide emissions, if that is the problem. More in two weeks than we emit in a whole year. Last week saw energy somersaults of Olympic proportion. You might recall at the 2019 Federal Election News Corp, a formidable and reputable media entity rightly savaged the ALP, which under Bill Shorten promised to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 45% by 2030. In that 2019 election, News Corp argued that the ALP's 45% reduction would, quote, see grocery bills soar, it will zap the national grid, and a front page story headlined, $60 billion, that's how much extra Labor's carbon policy will cost our economy, unquote. Now, remember, Labor was arguing carbon dioxide emissions reduction. But two years later, the same News Corp offered in October 2021 a 16-page wraparound on its capital city newspapers, proclaiming that, quote, Australia is the best placed nation on earth to be the global winner in a net zero world, unquote. No one arguing that we're a global energy giant and should not be intimidated by ideological zealots from taking advantage of our unique energy strength. Instead, a News Corp editorial argued, quote, by not declaring a net zero target, Australia stands accused of pushing against good citizenship and global opinion, unquote. In other words, we are frightened of a bit of international odium if we didn't toe the line with the authors of our economic suicide note. 